It might sound a little bit far-fetched, but there is a very strong case to be made for businesses letting people use their facilities. We've lost about a third of our public toilets in less than 20 years, and a campaign has now been launched by the British Toilet Association, yes, a real thing, to encourage companies to open up theirs. Oh, you know it's August, don't you? Uh, so could uh, it really help keep firms flush? Jane McCoven has been out and about to find out your views on loos. Do you know where there's a loo round here? Oh, no. Sorry, I don't. Goodness. No. No. Uh, it's not obvious then where they are. Well, the councils just don't fund them anymore, do they? We've lost about 39% of our public toilets. Needless to say, it's been, uh, you know... <laughs> Touch and go thing. at times. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's some nasty ones, but can go from the basic of stuff not being flushed, so you have to flush them yourself, or they can be stuff smeared on the wall. Stop, or... stop. <laughs> Breakfast telly. <laughs> some of them are good, why some of them are somehow horrible to use. Yeah. I think most restaurants will let you nip in, you know, especially a bar. Do you, do you slope in places where you've not paid? No. What, without, without spending yes. a penny yes. to spend your penny? Yes. Yes. Your wees are always legit. Yeah, they're always oh, legit. Always well, legit. Yeah. Yeah. You could do it, but really, it, it's not legitimate, is it? And there needs to be public toilets. People need wees. <laughs> How great was she? Thanks very much, Jane. With me now is the self-confessed toilet obsessive, Ian Stewart from Caledonia Washam. Thank you very much for coming Good in. Good morning to you. Uh, the papers have been full of stories, haven't they, about how the high street is faltering. I know you love a good loo, um, but can they really be the answer to all our problems, a good loo? I think businesses can really work a lot harder to, to get people to come in and making the toilets um, available to the public is certainly one way of doing that. But surely people only rush into public toilets when they're really desperate. They're um, a captive audience, so to speak. So what is the incentive for businesses to really invest in their facilities? Well, know your customers. I mean, if you're, if you're a family-orientated business, you really want to have toilets that actually attract families. So parents know that children need to go to the toilets. So why not have your toilets to be more children-orientated? Installing a child-friendly handrail, for example, can make a huge difference. Um, and parents know where to go and they'll, they'll look for that, that business to take their child to the toilet. Now, Jane sort of picked up on it there, you know, this issue around free riders and people popping in for a free wee. Um, are they a bit of a lost cause? Not really. Um, I mean, why not take advantage of the toilets and put advertising in there? So get your suppliers to pay. You know your target audience. Why not advertise to them whilst they're in there? So I don't see a problem. What kind of advertising seems to work? Um, well, it could be about um, special offers in the store. It can mm. be about, you know... Um, uh, events or anything coming up in the future. There's all sorts of advertising. All stuff for the local area. For the local area, yeah. yeah. OK, um, what are they doing abroad? Because I hear they're doing quite a roaring trade in Germany through their loos. Well, in, in, in public toilets overseas, and especially in Netherlands and Germany, people will pay to use the toilet, but what they'll do there then is that toilet voucher will then become a token that they can spend in the local business. So you can then go to the local cafe or go to the local bookshop and then spend that 30p or 30 cents or a euro or whatever it might be. And then, that's, then you're spending money in local businesses. And maybe that's something local authorities should really look to do across the whole of the UK to try and keep some of these public toilets open. So uh, what's going on at the moment? I mean, I know we were talking about how 39% have disappeared since 2000. Are they looking to open more? I mean, are, are we going to see any reversal in this? Councils have been squeezed budget-wise, and so one of the first things to go tends to be public conveniences. It yeah. tends to be difficult to upkeep, difficult to clean. They tend to be in not not on the high street, they're in out-of-way out of locations and people don't want to go and walk in through a park to get to a public toilet. They're just not where they need to be, which is right on the high street. Mm. And they're expensive to maintain, are they? So, you know, what are your top tips when it comes to boosting your bottom line? And that is the last kind of promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, keep your toilets clean. I mean, just really, if you clean toilets every day and regularly, it's easy to maintain and keep them clean. It's when you don't look after them, they tend to, to go down the pan, if you'll excuse the expression. And I hope my career hasn't gone down with it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ian Stewart. Ian Stewart. Toilet obsessive.
uh, millions of us are going to see our energy bills increase. We're talking about standard variable tariffs. That's pretty much the basic kind of rate that customers pay when uh, they're on a fixed deal, fixed price deal, and that then comes to an end. It's the most expensive type of deal. Even so, about 11 million of us are still on them. Now, British Gas, uh, they're the big boys, aren't they? And they're the latest of the energy providers to make their move. They're hiking prices by almost 4% from October. October, that's probably going to add about £44 a year to the average bill. Well, Megan French is from Money Saving Expert and joins me this morning. Thanks very much for coming in, Megan. Um, now, some people may not be so bothered, who knows, about spending an extra £44 a year on their energy bill, but is it fair that prices are rising at all? Well, it's worth noting this is actually the second price hike of the year by British Gas. And while this latest one, £44 a year for a typical dual fuel household, perhaps doesn't sound that much. It's going to push bills above £1,200 on average. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the cheapest deal on the market at the moment, that's £850. So there's actually a huge £300 saving to be had for a lot of consumers out there. So who tends to be on these higher bills? Who's on these standard variable tariffs? And how can you find out what type of bill you're on? So as, as you say, it's if your fixed deal has come to an end, you've been rolled over. It's worth noting as well that British Gas now has a temporary tariff that they roll people onto as well. But again, this is another expensive tariff. Um, so it's generally people that haven't switched in at least a year, um, you know, have perhaps had a little bit of inertia with their bills and just let them carry on. Uh, is there any value to being loyal? I mean, do you get any kind of bonuses for, you know, for staying loyal to a provider or should you really just, you know, be promiscuous and just find the lowest deal? Yes, switch and save every time. Have a look when your deal ends. Um, you know, diarise to start looking a good few weeks before. You know, there's no exit fees if you switch within the last period of your tariff. So there's no harm in that. And as we say, the biggest savings to had uh, by switching and it's very very easy so you can save 300 pounds so why don't people do it i think people perhaps don't always know how you know there's loads of comparison sites out there have a look at the cheapest deals for you and don't panic you won't be disconnected while you switch it's going to be the same pipe same meters all that changes is which company is actually billing you. Mm. Are any of the companies, because I think they're over 70 now when it comes to the UK energy market, are any of them sort of better than others when it comes to things like customer service? You know, does that change quite a lot? Because that's a big bugbear for people as well. It's not just the price, but also having to deal with these people when something goes wrong. Yeah, I mean, a lot of comparison sites as well, you can have a look at customer feedback. I would say that's always important. If there's something that, you know, you want to factor into your price, have a look out there and just double check before you switch. The government is putting in a sort of an energy price cap, aren't they, for customers this winter. But loads of energy companies, they've got in before this, haven't they? And they've hiked up their bills. So do you think it's a little too late? Um, too little, too late, really, from the government. So there, there's already a current price cap in for the vulnerable households. Now, these are on prepayment meters or those with the warm home discount. But when you look, the cap is only about £70 lower than the cheapest deal. Whereas actually, if you switch and save, you could be saving, you know, four times as much as that. So the onus is still very much on the consumers to switch, save and find those best deals. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the papers this morning. Some people might have seen the front page of the Express. Um, they're saying that the energy bill hike could put lives at risk. Is that overblown or is that a real risk, do you think? I mean, it's, it's awful to think that some people are in the situation where they, you know, they've got these bills that they just can't pay. So I would say... If, if you can, have a look, switch and save. Or if, you know, you've got neighbours, friends, family that you know might be struggling, just try and help them. It's really easy to switch. OK, all right, great advice. Thank you very much, Megan. So switch and save, that's the advice from us this morning. The pound has tumbled against the dollar. Bad news for anyone who's trying to think of exchanging perhaps euros for their holiday over the next few weeks. Victoria, it's not great, is it? It's not great. I mean, it's been worse, um, but it's been better still um, as well. Now, the value of the pound against both the dollar and the euro pretty much at lows we've not seen um, for the last year. So we have seen some improvements. So this is what it is at the moment in terms of the money markets. That's not necessarily the rate that you would get in a bureau de change, for example. And the same with that one there. I mean, we are hearing in places like Heathrow, the big airports, where you shouldn't go and change your money because you can find it cheaper elsewhere. But it's now... Uh, 
less than one euro to one pound at the moment. Uh, this is all really about that big word Brexit, isn't it? And Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, on Friday, when he was talking about interest rates and, and the fact that they hiked them for the first time in ages uh, last week, he said that the, the chances of a no deal when it came to Brexit, so our relationship with the rest of uh, the, the world and the rest of the EU, um, were uncomfortably high. And that echoes some of the comments that we heard on the weekend from Liam Fox, who's the International Trade Secretary. He put it at about a 60-40 chance that there is no deal. And that kind of uncertainty is clouding the outlook for the UK economy. And that means that traders who are looking at things like uh, interest rates and they're looking at things like currencies are betting against the pound. And that's why we're seeing it fall against other currencies.